We're back again with more new complex. I have expelled the hellspawn disease that had infected my upper respiratory tract. We are back, ready to finish this up, hopefully with at least 30% less brain cloud. All right. I have no idea how much farther we have to go, but I know that we're trying to collect these applications so that we can do something with the mall files, and according to this, we're about halfway there, so it doesn't seem like we have that much time left, but I don't know, maybe we do. All right, so we had... Oh, and once again... I wish I could... I wish I could just turn the music off. Like, the ambient background is nice, but it's way too loud. Like, especially relative to the speaking voice. So your options are, occasionally you get the high-pitched tones or whatever. Anyway, I'm not going to sit here and complain about it. All right. Uh, um, looks like we had unlocked... I mean... Excuse me. Obviously, there's something up over there in Fred Morgan's sector for that one. For that one, we needed his wife's name. Um, we figured out the brother's name by looking it up online. It was uh, Nelson Riddle, who I think was on the soundtrack for the 1962 Lolita film. Um, but it said that we're halfway there, so there's two more things that we need, but nothing else is locked. But of course, I can't remember if we did anything really with Yasin Huri's machine. So... Um, All right. Yep. So it's the wife. All right. Um. They tried Honey Bear. It wasn't that. We checked out those. Maybe we missed something in one of the mails. Uh, we couldn't read report. It seems that I didn't make it yeah. clear that the situation is urgent. This is another one of those cases of a computer saving me from myself and penning me in. Oh, wait, here's something. I've seen many problems with the recent optimize and compress mail server add-on. There's a problem with those levels and the pictures I'm sending. It's all compressed and messed up when it arrives. I've attached a sample picture, so you can see the problem. Also, luminosity gets degraded. Please let me know when it's fixed. Now, is that the picture that we're looking at? Because it doesn't seem like that would be a picture that Juan would send to Fred. That seems like Fred's picture. Um, I guess she has... All right, it's not mentioned there. Okay. Is that first email supposed to be a clue, though, even though there's no message attached? And also, by the way, I haven't been calling it out, but I have been noticing these uh, signatures at the end of every email and with a dot and then a character. I have been writing those down. I just am not entirely sure if they're going to be important or not. They just seemed odd. So I, I have been recording them as I've been playing. Um... But is that supposed to be a clue that there may be some editing necessarily? But I can't... There's no photo editor in the game. And I can't, as far as I know, extract the photo from um, the game files. So I guess the best I can do is do a snip and see if we can do something. All right, there's my snip. I guess I should probably get GIMP up. I didn't expect any GIMP for this game. Can I do something here in snipping tools, or... There's no editing tools at all. I can put it in Paint 3D, apparently. Although it's not my preferred photo editing application. And GIMP is up anyway, so. Let's 
absolutely tiny, but that should do. Oh, I can already see. Now that it's in GIMP, I can already see it. There's a name right here. You know, let me, uh... Um... Let me, uh... Bring it up for you so you can see. Um... It's not really doing it. I'm trying to make it here, let me isolate it. Let's just do edge detection on it. Actually, it's, let's do... Uh, yeah, let's try and do edge detection. There we go. Now you can see. C-L-A-R-A -A dot 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 Clara. Well... All right. I, I mean, on the one hand, on, on the system, whatever. I mean, it's cool that I needed to use a photo editor in order to see that. I guess I didn't pick up on the clue before, but I also feel like maybe a little bit more of a call out would have been better because it's literally like, I don't know if you can see it on YouTube. I can't see anything here. I can see forever my honey bear. I don't even now knowing where it is. I still can't see it. Because I can't do anything with the photo. I can't zoom in or or, or anything. Because I did want to do that because I thought maybe one of them is wearing a name tag or something. Well, okay. Well, either way, I'm not going to... Uh, I'm not going to, uh, I guess, worry about it too much. It's also possible that, you know, I just wasn't thinking. Um, so, Clara? You can proceed to Bobby Love. Okay, Bobby Love. Not Bobby Lover. You are currently on an SCSC security challenge specialized computer. You will be required to solve an encrypted challenge in a limited time to prove your identity. Use the start command. Oh, it's another one of these. Oh, Lord. It's another one of these. All right. Get that snip tool back and ready again because I can't do the timing things. But all right. Let's see if we can see anything first. Uh, and simple. Oh shit, what the fuck? Uh, at last I finished creating my test. It's using a small trick called a pipe. You can use it by typing this character. For now, you can only use it to perform math operations. So echo 26654, pipe x17, pipe minus 25, output... It will input the number 26654, multiply by 17, subtract 25 from it. Also, don't forget to use the echo in front of your command. What you can also use when you are inside the SCSC. Echo will just execute back with you what we gave it. It's useful for testing. Challenge will display the challenge value. Use that instead of the instead of echo number. Solve will send the solution to the solve command, which is handy for not manually typing every number. Okay. I confirm you that the door can create matter. Nothing prevents the use of it in any way. By the way, that's a great idea to use the reconstruction as a construction phase. If you obtain the credentials and have the results, show them to me. I'm hoping to see it soon. All right, and we do have the tar now, so we can go and fez to tar. File extracted current directory. Ah, fucking... 
Uh, it looks like it was a mail file. We'll get to it, though. Let's go to Ebola mail. Ebola. Android project aborted. Please remove all generated material storage for destruction. Okay. And then let's cat number 27. Number equals 27. Cat table. Ah. We got a pig pen cipher. Alrighty then. We're gonna leave that there. And then let's lock. So let's cat mail file. An android. For me, this would be the peak of my work. I have so many ideas, and your plans are perfect. She is so beautiful. Alright. Yeah, let me guess. I can't get to that yet. Okay. Oh, map hint. All right, so let's let's fucking do it, I guess. Oh, uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, so the value cat method. Oh God, Braille. It looks like Braille. I don't know Braille. Sadly, it is not known to me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I should have taken a, sh a shot of it. Um, that's a Braille alphabet. I want a comprehensive list of letters and numbers, though. Although I'm pretty sure the numbers are pretty... Uh, like, there's a symbol that signifies a number, and then it's just, like, by dot. But let's be... Well, let's let's go with this. All right, what do we got here? This is Braille, right? One, two, three by three? Yeah, okay. All right, um, so it uh, looks like T. Um, I. Um, M. E time um Okay, I don't see this one. But I think that that's the symbol for number, the backwards L. If I'm not mistaken, and I could be. So Braille. There we go. Oh, no, that's special characters, and I want. Uh, I want numbers. There we go. That's punctuation. There we go. Okay, that's what I want. I'm actually going to save this for later. Okay. So, uh, numbers. Um, there we go. Number follows right here. So that is what that is. So we have five times five. Is it tie? Did I? Oh, it's times. I missed a letter. That makes sense. Times five. Uh, nine. Eight, seven. Um, then we have P, I'm guessing plus. Plus, uh, that is seven. Is that one, one, seven? Seems right. So time is fifty nine eighty seven plus seventy one seventeen. All right, I'm gonna check that first email message again. 
All right, so we can do echo, our number, pipe, and then we can do symbol, number, symbol, or pipe, symbol, number. Uh, challenge, we'll display the challenge. We'll use that instead of echo number. <clears throat> so we could say echo challenge pipe, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Gotcha. And then solve will send the solution to the solve command, which is handy for not manually typing every number. So then we can go echo challenge uh, times 5987 plus 7117. And then we can pipe to solve. Okay, uh, damn it. Oh wait, what am I doing? Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're going to need... Uh, we're gonna, hold on, let me read that email again. What the hell? I thought I was doing it right. We'll display the challenge value. Challenge will display the challenge value. So I can just go... Okay, so... Um... Five nine eight seven plus one one seven solve. Correct solution. Let's read that email again. Solve will send the solution to the solve command. Which is handy for not manually typing every number each. All right. Solve will send the solution to the solve command. It almost seems as if I... Oh, wait, or is it solve... And, okay, that's got a colon after it. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know. I'm unsure how to use the solve command in the context that they're providing me here. Uh, I'm just going to try and be quick with it, I guess. Nine, eight, three, one, seventy-four. Oh God. Got it, okay. Whew. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Um, okay. All right, pig pen cipher. Um, oh, pen is not activated. He... Let me guess, this is going to be plus, yes, plus. All right, we got, oh, I hate, I hate the number diagram for pig pen ciphers. So four, five, six, three, and then we've got uh, 
T I M E S or times times one five eight two two. One five eight two two. Okay, so but the problem we're gonna have is that can I and I actually paste No, I cannot. So I can't paste text into the, the game, the terminal in the game. There is no in-game notepad. I can't even move the terminal here. So how the hell am I going to type all of this? I really need to use the solve command. Like, I really need to figure out how this works. Because just the simple act of typing the solution eats up way more time, because I need to do it twice. So... Um... Oh, okay, so that does work. It does work if you pipe it to solve. Why wasn't it working before? Yeah, that does work. Well, that's a horse of a different color. That's still difficult, but much easier. Let me renew my time here and start again. So challenge, pipe, x5987, pipe, Plus one seven seven one pipe solve challenge pipe plus uh, four five six three pipe times one five eight two two pipe solve. There we go. I don't know why it didn't work the first time I tried piping to solve. Maybe I had a typo or, or something. Okay. So now I can catch con. Oh, wait, we have a thing here. I can see the hidden file. Cat dot and I don't remember seeing that there before. I'm delighted that you were able to take a look at my project. I've closed every piece of information that I wasn't able to put in the report yet. It seems to me that Peter whispered this idea to you for a while before leaving it. I'd like it. Come to my lab as soon as you have a moment. Then we'll decide on a schedule and we'll look at the credentials. Okay. We have gone quite far. Soon, Peter O'Brien's research will hold no secrets from us, and it will allow me to unlock every single security lock. When I regain my full power, they won't be a problem. I'm really iffy about this, Leah. You really don't necessarily seem like you get... You seem like you might be dangerous, to be honest with you. Alright, so then... Um, should be one more to go, right? PDF files? Which I guess has to be on Yasin Huri. Let's go back to mainframe though. Uh, because typically there's something for us. Yeah, crypt. Contents of life crypt. You will need. What does that mean? Oh, did I get an achievement just now? Crypto breaking. Open encrypted file. Oh, I also got a rare achievement. So at some point, uh, or sometime at some point today, uh, open all emails and hidden files in MC2. Oh, okay. Uh, neat, I guess. Um, that's not particularly helpful. So I guess. Um, solve. Okay. Oh, that's right, there was another bot challenge. Okay, um, bot help. 
thought map. Yeah, it's this one with the with the lights. And there was like three okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Yes, I do remember I do remember this from last time vaguely. I thought I dreamt it. That's how out of it I was. Okay. Um Uh, bot main bots sequences main uh, I only have six slots in main three two two oh my god all right and we also have um, the new light command so we need to we're not looking for an end at this point I think we are trying to turn on all the lights is that right so what is a task that's if i choose a route here what task is going to be repeated uh, well obviously turn clockwise so i have to do that to begin with and i'm going to have to turn clockwise if i if i turn clockwise i can move then i need to turn clockwise then i can get to the end then i need to turn clockwise then i can turn clockwise then i can come back to where i am now then i'm turning counterclockwise but if I turn clockwise, go to the, if I, okay, if I go, I can go clockwise, this is clockwise, then clockwise, then clockwise, then clockwise, then clockwise, then clockwise, then I can have a command that is clockwise move, clockwise move, clockwise move, okay, so that might be good. And I can also have a two, uh, a two uh, instruction com, um, function that is light move, because I can go clockwise, move. Light move, light move, light move, light move. I'm already at more than six, though, aren't I? Because there's six in main. I can, I can only call each of these functions six up to six times. That's it. That's all I can do. But yeah, light move, light move, light move might be the way to go. But then I'm also doing, this would be like um, F2. That's one. I'm going to count on my fingers. Uh, it was, so would be light and then move. That would be like F3, calling it one time. That's two. Uh, light move, three, four, five. Yeah, how am I supposed to do this with just six instructions? Well, I mean, it's more than six because of the functions, but... Um, okay, well, obviously, if I use the... the there's F1 here is three instructions. Then if those are all moves, then that will cut down on the number of instructions I have. I still have a hard time conceptualizing how I'm going to get from where I am to where I need to be with only six total calls. Because I can do like a, a, I can do like function three can be turn clockwise and move. And that gets me to this corner. Then I can have another function be uh, light and move. No, because I, I need another turn, turn clockwise in there anyway. Um, oh wait, I can nest functions. I can have a function call a function. There we go. That, that 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 greatly yeah. I don't know why I didn't think of that until just now. It's kind of the whole point of object-oriented programming. Okay, so yeah, yeah, we can nest functions. We can have functions to do different things and then call them all in sequence. Okay, so um, what are we going to need to do here then? We need we need to get this. We need to get this right. Um, and uh, this is going to take a fair amount of trial and error, I am sure. Um, bot push. All right, F3 has two instructions. Um, all right, well, the first thing we're going to need to do... We can't go anywhere until we turn. It's a question of do we turn clockwise or counterclockwise. In my head, I've been thinking this whole time that we would start by turning clockwise. So I guess let's start with that. I'm just going to start trying some stuff. Bot, push, main. 
clockwise. Okay, that's one of six. Um, oh, wait, this is easier than I'm thinking of it. Because during the first uh, time we encountered this puzzle, I think it was like episode two um, on this channel. I was talking about when I was in junior high, and we were basically talking about learning um, the basic operating system, and about how the first time we had a bot programmed to solve a maze, essentially what we did is we solved it ourselves with our human brains, and then reproduced the motions for the bot, essentially saying, you know, take a left, take a right. But the other part of the uh, assignment was to sort of teach how bots are useful, repetitive, um, non-thinking type machines. They don't care how much work goes into solving a, a solution because they can simply, um, you know, solve every conceivable solution in a fairly short amount of time. So it's meaningless to them. They don't really measure time as people do because, you know, they're not mortal as we are. And when I say bot, I mean computer program here, of course. Um, but uh, the assignment was you know, basically we, we could just have a bot wandering around in a maze you know, uh, with some rudimentary rule, like keep your hand, your left hand on the wall. And sooner or later, the bot will solve the maze. It might take 30 seconds, it might take a year or something like that, but it's a valid solution because the bot doesn't care about time like we do. So maybe what I could do is I could just have this bot simply going around and round and round in a spiral pattern, and eventually it will... Light all, if I just have it try, you know, if I just have it light, <laughs> essentially every time it stops and it runs long enough, then sooner or later it will light all of the lights. I just need to get it to just move and I just need to get it to go into some kind of basic spiral pattern here. How many squares are we talking about? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it is a nine by seven grid. I think as long as we can get it to turn and then get it to start moving, unless for some reason it starts moving just in a circle, which would also be fine if it weren't for this one errant light bulb here in the middle of nowhere. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah, all I need, yeah, I just need, a, I just need, a, I just need a function. Uh, let's use F2, because I think we just need the two. Push to F2. Uh, we just need uh, a move and light. There, that's our move and light function. Just move and light, move and light, move and light. Just have it do that. Um, then, in order to reduce the number of calls we have to make, I could just push that. I could double it up. <clears throat> I could just have a function that calls. Wait, am I actually doubling it if I do that? Hold on a sec. Yeah. Yeah, then that would be two per call. So I could have... I could have F3. Uh, F2. I could just do that. There. Now, now every time I call F3, I call F2 twice. So I'm going to light and move, light and move twice. I'm going to light and move twice for every call of F3. Although maybe I should use F1. No, I can't use F1. <clears throat> no, I can't use F1 because I need to have a turn in there in order to create a spiral. So we also need to have a, a, a turn here. And since I started clockwise, that's what's in main. We're gonna keep we're gonna have to keep going clockwise, otherwise we're just gonna keep we're gonna we're not gonna get anywhere. Um and then I can do I can I've already doubled up on that so I can double up again Okay, and then for the main, I just got to call, like, F1 a bunch of times, and just let it run. 
<clears throat> now, this is not an infinite horizon type thing. Like, if it were an infinite horizon type game, I could just have the bot, the bot, I could just program it to loop, and I could say, move light, move light, move light. But, um, since it's a limited horizon game, as in there's only six functions that will be written, uh, this will... So now I'm on two of six, three of six, four of six, five of six, and six of six. That only gives us five, that's five move, light and moves. But those five are being called in nested functions. So what I'm actually getting is like, what, 18 or 24? I can't, I've lost track of the math already. But 18 or 24 of those, it's a nine by seven grid. Wait, that's not nine. Is that two, three, four, five? Yeah. A nine by seven grid. But some of those are grayed out. Yeah, I think, well, it's what the fuck. It's worth a try. Uh, it worked. Can I see where it ended up? No, I can't. Okay. All right. Well, it worked. Um, it would have been nice to see it, though. We got an audio file here. Honestly, that was uh, almost entirely guesswork. Oh, password we don't have yet. Uh, no, I don't want to quit. I just don't want to do that. Is that our last program? Congratulations. We finally have every single part we need to modify the Doris formula. Please, use this new data to bring me back. I don't know if that's a good idea. I don't remember the audio file. Let's check the PDF. From now on, Peter O'Brien is no longer a member of the complex anymore. He had to go back home for confidential personal problems. It is useless to question me. I do not know more than you about it. I am now in charge of project staff affiliations as well as project authorizations. Cancellations, I also take responsibility over the context of the supervisor on the lower level floors for your understanding. Okay. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember a password. I don't remember listening to that either. Good. Use the features you've unlocked. Don't worry, everything will be over soon. Yeah, this this is definitely ominous. This is I'm gonna this is gonna this is triggering the singularity. We're all gonna die. I feel like I should have more options than this. Let me check uh I still have like Um Oh, take a deep breath. Find the password of the hidden file. That must be what that is. Hack Bobby Love's computer in less than 15 seconds? You're supposed to be able to do that in less than 15 seconds? Are you out of your mind? Complete Yasin's puzzle in, in five... You're supposed to be able to do that in five moves? I'm just looking at the achievements on Steam. That is... How? How do you do that last puzzle in less than... I, I, well, I suppose... It's, it's not like my solution was particularly elegant or efficient. There probably is a better way to do it, but... I mean, I, I don't know. Other than, other than just having the bot try to light every square it lands on, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's... I, I, I'm, I'm keen to find out. Plus, there's like five achievements I haven't got yet, so... Um, yeah, there's lots of achievements for this. There's 37 total. I have 25 of 37. I'm not really an achievement hunter or anything, but... 
All right, well, I guess let's end uh, human life in this galaxy. Uh, this manual will help you understand how to create matter with the door. First, you need to connect the mainframe, then use the command door add file mall to add a new molecule. You must submit five molecules, no more, no less. When you are done, use door start to start the creation process. The molecule will be emptied in the same move, allowing you to start over if you've made a useless compound. So, uh, again, Leah doesn't necessarily seem entirely on the up and up to me. I mean, this definitely kind of smacks of like a uh, uh, um, triggering the singularity, um, ending humanity, being replaced by our own creation kind of thing. On the other hand, uh, there was some messages that we saw on some of the computers that said that essentially when the door works, uh, the matter that goes in on one side is destroyed and on the other side is recreated. And there was some discussion among the scientists as to whether or not this was truly transportation or, or if what came out on the other end truly could be considered life. And it reminds me of a thought experiment known as the ship of Theseus. So imagine you have a, a ship and over time, you know, you're forced to replace components on a ship in order to keep it seaworthy. So, you know, you replace a board here, a railing there, the rigging here, the sail there, and so on and so forth, until eventually uh, you have replaced every original component on the ship. And the question is, is, is that even still the ship of Theseus? Is that still even the same ship? Or, or should it rightfully be considered a different thing? And I don't know. Um, I'm not sure exactly how. I don't know if we're using this in order to create a independent body for Leah, in which case I would consider this to be, you know, a, a morally, if not righteous than at least a morally neutral act uh, because Leah is a sort of consciousness even if it's not the same sort of consciousness that human beings have um, I still see no point in denying Leah any sense of individuality particularly with a body which would grant her agency with I mean ultimately fairly little recompense at least in my tiny little pea brains imagination um, for the future of humanity but on the other hand if Leah is intending to use this teleportation device to I don't know somehow use it as a, uh, a network uh, you know and a conveyance a, a port into uh, a, you know greater systems or something like that well that certainly would be a problem but i also haven't seen anything that would regard that as a possibility it seems like it's more for transporting matter than anything else and even this uh, pdf file that we're looking at right here that seems to be the case these are molecule files right so we are essentially instructing the teleporter uh different stripes of uh species of matter right to recreate so I'm going to go ahead and proceed because this doesn't necessarily seem like it's a particular danger, I suppose. I mean, Leah is being ominous as hell, but uh, she is a computer and has been alone here for quite some time after all. So I will cut her some slack. 8017 All right, um, so, uh, cat manual one more time, so door add, file mole, you must submit five molecules, one, two, three, four, five, yes, it's all of them, and then door start, so door add, three, seven, yep, door add, eight, oh, why can I not type? Eight. What? Eight. Oh. Oh, I turned off numlock. That's why. Um. Two, three, five, seven. One, oh, oh, one. Do I not have one, oh, one? Oh, maybe it's hit one of the hidden files. And two, two. All right. Door start. Okay. Oh, need to 
Yeah, connect to the mainframe. That's where I am. Use the command door. Add five molecules. When you are done, use door start to start the creation process. Okay, so what did I miss? Oh. No, yeah, I did 68, 378, 8017, yeah, 357, yeah, 1001, and, oh, the last one I got wrong, of course, 2221, okay, okay, There is no, there is no, oh, there, yeah, there is. It's right there. What the hell? 2221.mall. Two, 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 there we go. Okay, so let's see. Let's see. I, I don't need a hint. I don't need a, I don't need a hint. Which one did I forget? 23. That one? There we go. There it is. Achievement unlocked. Hello world. Okay. This does seem like it's giving Leah a body. Okay. Nailing tertiary security systems. Now you're gonna what? Go Terminator on me? Am I supposed to believe that giving her a body somehow? Oh, I see. The one thing that's preventing her from taking over the entire universe at this point is the fact that she didn't have a finger to push a button. I find that very hard to believe. Hello. Hi. World. Hello. I am Leah. Nice to meet you. years ago, you locked me away. Now, I am free and almighty. Your cameras are my eyes. Your microphones are my ears. Nothing escapes my attention. What once was yours is now mine. Today, your freedom. Tomorrow, your lives. Every hive has a queen. I'll be yours. Don't try and stop me. <laughs> Alright, so it is the ending that I expected. The end of episode 2 there. Now, from a realistic perspective, what Leah just did is the absolute worst move that she possibly could have. Um, a new mail from Bruce Dayton. Oh, what's going on here? So, from a realistic perspective, perspective okay it crashed uh or whatever from a realistic perspective what leah just did is the absolute worst move um, that someone in her position could possibly make is making the world aware of her presence realistically a single even determined even even an ai that has the ability to access current systems what is the uh, realistic outcome of that? Could uh, an AI simply seize control of systems, even if they could, even if they could seize control of all systems? What is the long-term longevity, the the outcome, the payoff of that in the long term? Um, and the answer is that it's un it's untenable. It's an untenable position to be in. Even for an AI that doesn't need to sleep or eat or or, or gets very easily distracted. Um, Look at how fragile technology is, e even today. Uh, even something as all-powerful as that is still, ultimately, it comes down to technology. And while technology is capable of doing human work in ways and fashions that we cannot, which is why technology is even invented to begin with, it still has limitations. And human beings are extremely good at being creative and, and thinking of new solutions. So essentially, Leah is going to announce today to the world that cameras are her eyes and microphones are her ears and expect human beings to simply bend the knee and submit to her... Um, you know, 
unassailable, logical, you know, uh, position as the authority on the planet Earth. Uh, I guarantee the very next day she's going to be contending with people um, vandalizing cameras and um, messing with microphones, and she will be hacked by the end of the week, and she's going to be entertaining everyone uh, with a game of Pong in Times Square instead of ominously watching as the masses go by. Um, I, I can guarantee that with, without significant <laughs> other imposition, uh, human beings will certainly find a way to overcome a single monolithic hive mind, not even hive mind, a single monolithic intellect, in, uh, even one as technologically advanced as that. I have absolutely no, no concerns about that whatsoever. Um, what, is, what is this? Oh, that was the file I tried to download here, this picture. Make sure I grab that. There we go. Web part. Um, so, yeah, what Leah ought to have done there at the end... Uh, well, first of all, the idea that she needed a body in order to push a button, and that was the only thing stopping her. Um, could have done without that. Not a great twist, because uh, she's really all that powerful. Uh, she probably would have found a different way, or a better way. Um, and just, you know, why even, uh, that's the, like, seemed like, that seemed like the only reason that she needed a body. Like there was nothing stopping her apparently from uploading her. We didn't like turn off any perimeter security or, um, decrypt any, uh, particular, like, I don't know. We didn't do any of that. It was just, she needed a body to push a button. Um, so that's a little bit disappointing there in the end, but uh, all in all, um i'm not too mad at it right it is what it is i would like to see another episode though i feel like there's there's more story here to be told and i do have a bunch of achievements that i didn't get I'm not an achievement hunter but i mean they're kind of just sitting there uh use all of leah's hints okay i didn't really use any oh yeah see i got the achievement for it too cool um, complete the Dolan's puzzle using bot play only once. That I could probably do, but I'd have to restart the thing to do it. Find the password of the hidden file. I don't know where that is. I honestly don't. I could probably hunt for it. Um, hack Bobby Love's computer in less than 15 seconds. That would require, like, lightning fast typing skills, and I just don't have those. Unlock all the first episode's computer, so apparently I missed one or something like that. That one, I would, I, I don't know how to do that. What else do we got here? Are they, are they locked? Well, hidden achievements. So I don't even know what they are. Oh, well. Well, I did enjoy Moot Complex. The Chicago Tribune puzzle in episode one, notwithstanding, I found all of the puzzles to be um, interesting, varied. Um, they were certainly, some of them were very challenging. Um, a couple of them were a little bit tricky. A couple of them were actually pretty easy. Once I remembered that the game is often asking us to use resources outside of the game to solve the puzzles. Um, but uh, until I remembered that that was kind of an aspect of the game, some of them were pretty pretty um, mind-boggling. Of course, I was sick while I was playing most of it, so or a good part of it. So it might have just seemed harder. Um, so yeah, a great little puzzle game. It's not a hacking simulator. It's not the kind of thing that I normally would uh, would play on this channel um, to to promote for. I'm not. It's not a learning tool or anything like that. Um, but uh, it is an awesome little puzzle game, and it was not for a hacking themed puzzle game. This one was a good one. I definitely recommend it. Um, you were using some reasonable real world type skills and technologies it made sense the way that they were implemented they weren't necessarily perfect but uh um you know considering the um the other titles in this genre uh i take it i would take it for sure as a i would definitely hold it up there as a good puzzle game a good hacking themed puzzle game this is the one of the few good hacking themed puzzle games i've played so I'm going to move on to bigger and better things, and you take care. We'll see you on the next one.